Welcome to Cardinals Cover 2 with Craig Grealoux and Mike Jarecki. Cardinals Cover 2 is brought to you by Arizona Cardinals Podcasts. Visit azcardinals.com slash podcasts. From the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center, here's Craig Grealoux and Mike Jarecki. So those that were with us for Monday's show know that we kind of ended it with a little bit of a question mark. We wanted Kyle Odegaard to return to Cards Cover 2 here as he fills in for Mike Jarecki, but there was a little bit of a, not a question, uh, yeah, it was a question as far as whether Kyle wanted to come back. So you are here, mm-hmm. so I guess we satisfied either your enjoyment of Monday or all the conditions you placed in front of us to come back for Wednesday. I had to think about life's okay. priorities, and I realized that I don't really have a life. I have nowhere to be, and may as well be here and talk to you a little bit about some football. Well, I don't know how that makes us feel here on Cards <laughs> Covered too, but uh, again, we appreciate you uh, fitting us into your much busy schedule here. Honestly, I wasn't even sure I was going to be welcomed back after I was uh, maybe being a little bit too mouthy toward you and – I know there's a big line of replacement, so I'm actually feeling lucky that you would have me back. So I appreciate it. Well, you missed the memo because for the first time, we we're not wearing the same shirt this True. week. So uh, already off to a... Yeah, not enough yeah. synergy today. We'll see how the rest of the show goes here on this Wednesday afternoon. With that, let's take off and tell you what's ahead on the show here. We'll be joined by rookie safety Tyler Sigler. He's got a great story on how he ended up with the Cardinals. We get to know rookie wide receiver Hakeem Butler, what he's like off the field. The next episode of Cardinals Flight Plan debuts tomorrow. We've got a sneak peek today. And, of course, your questions via social media. And for those watching on Facebook Live using the hashtag CardsCover2, hashtag CardsCover2, using the number two to get involved in the show. We'll love hearing from the Bird Gang here on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's all ahead. But first things first, the news of the day. And, uh, Kyle, I'm not exactly sure how you spent your Tuesday night, but we do know where the head coach was, and that was at Chase Field. Cliff Kingsbury taking in the Diamondbacks-Rockies game last night. Not sure if it was his first game at Chase Field, but uh, the Diamondbacks uh, tweeted out a picture of Coach Cliff Kingsbury over there uh, on the left, obviously, and then manager Tori Lavello pregame for uh, yesterday's contest and I'll say this uh, all the professional teams in this market do a great job and they do have relationships not just the teams but the coaches the managers because different sports but they all have the same job yeah they do in a high pressure job and everybody's always willing to criticize them when things go wrong and they don't I don't think get enough credit when things go right when they do push the right buttons because people just expect that to happen the majority of the time. I I like watching when players go, and a lot of them will throw out the first pitch, but I've seen a couple of them do batting practice. David Johnson has done it. Patrick Peterson. Peterson was really good at it, but all these guys – Johnson his first time was not not very good. good, All of them like doing the hypothetical discussions on who the best baseball player is or who the best basketball player is in the locker room. Pretty sure with Kyler Murray being drafted, I think we can put the debate to bed on who the best baseball player is in that locker room. Yeah, there is no debate about that, uh, considering he is the uh, first and and you know the only one to be drafted in the first round of both the Major League Baseball draft and the National Football League draft, and of course number one overall with the Arizona Cardinals. Unfortunately for uh, Kingsbury last night, didn't see the D-backs win. They lost the Rockies by the score of 8-1. to one. But uh, again, uh, props to the D-backs, the Cardinals, and uh, we've even seen the Phoenix Suns out at training camp as yeah. well at State Farm Stadium. So a lot of synergy as uh, we talk about it amongst the uh, major professional teams here in the market. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you weren't at the game, Kyle, I don't even know if you were watching it because I know we were busy uh, writing a story that is now up on azcardinals.com about rookie wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson. And I know that uh, took a little bit more of your time as far as diverting it to the attention of anything else. But uh, a great story on the uh, third of the three wide receivers drafted. And one of those wide receivers I don't know if we've talked enough about. Everyone knows about Andy Isabella, the speed, Hakeem Butler with the uh, height, the big target. But here is Johnson, the first pick of the sixth round number 174 overall and uh, someone that I think well we know that the Cardinals really value but I think fans are going to as well 
Yeah, and he, he's the type of guy, like, he's not this super athlete. They go to the combine, and everybody loves to really figure out who the best athletes are. And DK Metcalf got so so much attention because of his 40 time, and it was through the roof for the size he is. And Keyshawn Johnson wasn't that guy. But you look at what he did in college and the pure numbers he put up, and, and that's what he's saying. He goes, yeah, I didn't have the, the best 40 time, but – I made plays on the football field, and he feels like that's going to translate to the NFL. And I think the most famous example is Jerry Rice not running a fast 40 time, and he became the greatest receiver in NFL history. And Larry Fitzgerald doesn't run the best 40, but he still gets it done. So it's good to have speed, but it's not the end-all, be-all. And Keyshawn Johnson would love to just prove that I can make plays because of my route running, because of my hands. He's got a lot of characteristics that can make him successful. Well, we even heard that about Christian Kirk last year as far as his speed and how was he going to get off the line of scrimmage. Well, (laughs) all you need is a quick first step uh, and then beat your man or get your defender off balance. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter how fast you are, that extra step and a half, perhaps, all of a sudden, they're not going to catch you anyway. And then by that time, if they have gotten to you, well, you have the football anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, you think right away, Christian Kirk against the 49ers, he had the 80-yard touchdown where he did a double move and the guy bit on it and he easily beat him deep. And then the bubble screen against yep. the Raiders where he was outracing everybody to the end zone. Nobody was catching him on that play. So there is the game speed, and and sometimes it doesn't translate in this specific 40 where you're not doing football moves. You're just running in a straight line without pads. So it can be a little bit misleading maybe at times, a guy's pure 40 speed. And like you said, there's so many examples of guys that have overcome it. Well, let's go back to what general manager Steve Kime had to say about Johnson after selecting him on day three of the 2019 draft. The one thing that jumped out at me about this young man is, as I watch the tape, he's one of the better natural route runners that I saw uh, in this draft process. I'm talking about a guy who can drop his weight, who's really good getting in and out of routes, is extremely smooth, uh, could probably play Z for us, could play X, could play a number of different spots. So his position versatility and his playmaking ability jumped off the tape at us. And that was something that Johnson mentioned on the conference call immediately after he was selected because he was asked, where do you see yourself as an inside receiver or an outside? And he was, at that point, one, he's happy to get drafted. And two, it's like, you know what, just put me on the field. I'll figure it out. But we hear that a lot, and we've talked about it on this show as far as, okay, where does Larry Fitzgerald play? Where does Hakeem Butler, Andy Isabella? And I think you're going to see these guys interchangeable and move around quite a bit, even – even a big receiver like Butler. Yeah, and I I think that's a testament to Cliff Kingsbury and where the NFL is going, this idea of positionless football a little bit. We've seen it a lot on the defensive side of the ball where back in the day, Dayon Buchanan would have been a safety and the Cardinals moved him to linebacker. Uh, A guy like Hassan Reddick can be moved around a lot. And, And now, yeah, with receivers, maybe Larry Fitzgerald coming out, obviously he was an outside receiver, and then they moved him inside, and he showed how much success he could have in the slot. So if you're Keyshawn Johnson, you want to show him that you can play both inside and outside to get on the field any way you can. And Cliff Kingsbury will figure out matchups and maybe a guy, even game to game, he might suit himself better inside because of what the defense is doing schematically or personnel-wise. And uh, if Johnson can do that, like you said, Butler, all these guys want to be able to move around and give Kingsbury as many candidates in different spots as possible. On the topic of route running, wide receivers coach David Rye had this to say about Keyshawn Johnson when he joined Paul Calvisi and Lisa Matthews on the Coach's Chronicle podcast. I mean, Keyshawn is like the guy's smooth. I mean, you could put a glass of water on his head and he can run 80 yards (laughs) without spilling a drop. You know, he is... He's like a motorcycle. Like it's all one piece, the release, the stem, the top. He kept, he runs right through the football. You know, you see he ran. I don't know what he ran. He ran a four or five. Doesn't matter. And the guy plays full speed throughout the whole thing. And an easy depiction is you've, we've all seen receivers run fast, stop, catch the ball, then run fast, right? Well, his play speed is incredibly fast. Just the way he runs routes and his hands. I think he caught. 95 out of 120 passes thrown to him, Mm. which is 
I mean, you think about that, it's remarkable. Yeah. And broke all Devontae Adams' records at Fresno State. Who you know real well, Devontae Adams, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, Devontae for sure is a huge supporter of Keyshawn. Um, but Devontae had Derek Carr. Yeah. And can you guys name yeah. Keyshawn's quarterback? No, no. no idea. Right, so right. he's he's been incredibly productive. And that's the thing right there is, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know who was throwing the ball to Keyshawn Johnson, but we all know Derek Carr from who was uh, the longtime uh, Fresno State quarterback as far as Devontae Adams and then Coach Rye coached Adams uh, at Green Bay for a number of years. But he almost, talking about Coach Rye, dismissed the 40 time because, and we talk about it, how much those numbers during the scouting combine are dissected and, okay, how many times do you see an offensive lineman run a 40? Or how many mm-hmm. times does someone run a 40 even you know, in pads off a line of scrimmage or doing a three-cone drill and all this stuff? But to a certain extent, yeah, you need to come off the ball quick, but at that point it doesn't really matter how fast you are because there's other things you have to do before you even get to that point. Yeah, and, and even the guys that have the elite speed, obviously J.J. Nelson was here for several years, and he had a, a decent amount of big plays because he could go over the top because he was an elite speed guy, but he never developed the intermediate and the short routes, so he was kind of that one-trick pony where when J.J. Nelson was on the field, they have to watch out for him going out over the top, and that's about it. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, if he can do this route running as well as David Rye says – then you don't know where he's going to go, when he's going to stop, and that that really puts the stress on a cornerback. So, yeah, you I mean, you want guys fast if you can get it, but every single guy isn't going to be the prototype of what you want. And, and if he can carve out a nice role for himself, you're talking about a sixth-round pick, so you're not expecting a pro bowler. But if he can have a role even as a rookie, that's a big plus for the offense. And I love the description. Put a glass of water on his head and he could run 80 yards without spilling a drop. And it just, you know, get that picture in your head. And it just the the smoothness in which he runs. And that is something we heard from Steve Keim on just the ability to run routes effectively to where there's your separation. It's not so much the speed, but if you can run a route correctly and the quarterback knows where you're going to be, the defender doesn't, and then all of a sudden you've gained that window for that ball to go through. Yeah, and there's so timing is so important in the NFL. If, if he can create that chemistry with Kyler Murray, like you said, it, if even if a cornerback can get up on you quicker because he's not as worried about the elite speed, as you mentioned, you know where you're going before he does. So you make a, a good move and you you sell a different way you're going to go and then you cut left when they think you're going right, you're going to be open. And they talk about his hands, clearly a guy that can catch the ball when it's delivered to him in a good fashion. So I think when you talk about later round picks, there are going to be issues somewhere. It's not going to be a guy who, who runs fast and has, and is big and strong and can catch. So you're going to have some sort of weakness. It's about overcoming those and becoming a good player. And you look at all the late round picks that have become pro bowlers in the NFL. Richard Sherman was the guy who didn't have the speed and he turned into one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. So Keyshawn Johnson, from what we've heard in the off season has, has done a nice job of equipping himself well in the NFL. And, and he just has to keep going at this point and try to carve out that role. And that's something that he's always had to work for. And you pointed out in your story that's up on azcardinals.com, his background and only three scholarship offers coming out of high school and then not looked at much at Fresno State, as evidenced by his day three selection. So he's always had that chip on his shoulder, and it sounds like it's still there to this day. Yeah, it almost feels like a redux of him going from high school to college when it, it, you know, he got scholarship offers from a few schools right around where he grew up, nobody out of state, no big conference schools. And then, like you said, he's setting school records and out you know breaking Devontae Adams records and we see the talent that Devontae Adams has in Green Bay so 
if he comes anywhere close to what he did from high school to college going to the NFL, then you're going to have a gem of a six-round pick. Yeah, back-to-back 1,000-yard receiving seasons for Johnson, and he is the career school leader in both career receptions and receiving yards, marks that Adams held before Johnson arrived at Fresno State. Uh, One other note before we uh, get to our conversation with uh, rookie safety Tyler Sigler, the uh, NFL Network asked this question earlier in the week. Which player who doesn't have a Super Bowl ring is most deserving? And the answer from Nate Burleson involved a certain Cardinals wide receiver. Um, another guy that has been consistent at a, a, a later age, Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, I feel like Larry can get that ring. It will be the ultimate validation of his career. Not solidification. He's already solidified as a Hall of Famer, but it will validate all the work that he's put in. Just quickly, I mean, he's second in yards, second all time. All time. All, we're talking all time, folks, behind, of course, the GOAT, Jerry Rice. Mm-hmm. He's third in catches, which is unbelievable in itself. And he's sixth in TDs. And he's just 12, catch, 12 TD catches away from being in the top five in every major statistical category. And guess what, guys? They're going to be throwing the ball a ton this year. Yes, it's fine. So Larry Fitzgerald can keep adding to the stats. I know it's crazy to think that the Cardinals with a young quarterback could win a Super Bowl. But, hey, why not? A man could dream, can he? So Hell yes. I, I would love to see Larry Fitzgerald get a ring. Nate Burleson on the NFL Network. And uh, I'll disagree slightly with him as far as the validation because I, I don't think there's any validation whatsoever. It's just a, the getting that ring would be just the, the, the cherry on top, if you will. I mean, just a, it doesn't need to solidify or validate his career. Fitz's career is it's is a finished product. Mm-hmm. Now, this just this would add to it and not even make it complete, but just say, okay, he got it because of all the work he has done both on and off the field. And at this point in the career, that's has to be the singular thing that's driving him because he's accomplished so much. And when you're younger, you're worried about getting the big contract and setting yourself up and your family up and, and maybe doing things on an individual level. But once you get to where Larry is in, in his career, it's all about winning a championship, coming so close in the Super Bowl. And then even 2015, uh, I started covering the team in 2013. And when they made the NFC Championship game, I remember being in the press conference after they lost to the Panthers. And you could just see how mentally drained Larry Fitzgerald was and, and how hard a time he was having coping with it, which you don't see a lot out of Larry where he's not super emotional in the press conferences on the field he will be but when he gets there he's he's usually measured and and not too high or too low but you could just see it in his eyes how much it hurt to lose that nfc title game shot and yeah i think there is some excitement around this team and they're right i mean the cardinals going from three and 13 to the super bowl that's uh, probably a pipe dream but the fact that you have an exciting young quarterback and and then if you talk about Larry maybe sticking around, if they start showing some momentum, then, you know, you never know if maybe it is possible. So it's it's something that I'm sure he would love to cap his career with the Super Bowl. And that last part, I think, is the important part because, you know, you see improvements this season. You take the next step and knock on wood, Fitz stays healthy. He still loves the game, has the passion to play for it, loves Sunday, sometimes the Monday through Saturday is what kind of gets guys out of the game. But uh, I could see him sticking around and just uh, rejuvenated, if you little, uh, if you will, just because of the offense and especially if, one, you're winning and then, of course, balls are coming your way. Yeah, I mean, and by all intents and purposes, you expect him to get a bunch of targets this year, have good numbers. And, and as, as hard as it sounds to make this big of a turnaround, we've seen it quite a bit with rookie quarterbacks where – you show a little bit of promise, and uh, Jared Goff wasn't a rookie two years ago, but he was in his second season, and, and the Rams really turned things around quickly. So if if the Cardinals can make some progress, uh, it, it can snowball a lot faster in the NFL than, say, baseball or something like that because you get the right person at quarterback, and then when you talk about a rookie, you've got a cheap salary there, and then you can spend money to put resources around him. So if the Cardinals can get on the right path with a new coach, with Kyler Murray, this thing can get turned around quicker than people might expect. Yeah, just something to think about here as we get ready 
for 2019. As we continue here on this Wednesday afternoon from the Dignity Health Arizona Cardinals Training Center, broadcasting as we always do in our Bose QC 35s. Go to Bose.com for more information. A reminder, if you ever miss a show, you can download as a podcast via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn, and SoundCloud. And don't forget, all of your favorite Cardinals podcasts can be found at azcardinals.com forward slash podcast. Speaking of podcasts, there is a brand new Cardinals Underground that has been uploaded as well and a chance for you and Paul Calvisi to talk with passing game coordinator and quarterbacks coach Tom Clements. Uh, I listened to it earlier and uh, enjoyed that conversation because we haven't heard much from Coach Clements. Yeah, and obviously Cliff Kingsbury being the offensive maestro that he is, the lion's share of attention is going to go on him and, and Kyler Murray, who we've already talked about a lot on this show. But Tom Clements is a, a guy who has a bunch of experience in the NFL, and I think that's important because Cliff Kingsbury, for as innovative as he is, he did it at the college level, and and he needs to make some adjustments coming to the NFL. And having a guy like Tom to lean on, who he he, he mentored Aaron Rodgers a lot, and he coached Brett Favre, so – He's seen the best of the best at the quarterback position, and he's seen a lot of defenses and the way they've changed over the years. So I think having that sounding board is important for them, and and he likes what he sees out of Kyler Murray. It's it's early, obviously, but he's got a, a special skill set that Tom was bringing up, and, and it's something I think everything you wanted to see out of Kyler Murray, so far we've seen it, and he's got a long way to go because he hasn't gone against defenses that are trying to trick him quite yet. And he's not used to the speed of the NFL yet, but from what we heard, the early impressions from Tom Clements is that he's excited about his path. Yeah. And he's much further along in Clements words than other rookie quarterbacks at this stage because of the familiarity with the offense. So that bodes well for the Cardinals moving forward. Speaking of the Cardinals, they do great work in the community and now they're asking for you to get involved as well. In honor of its 100th season, the NFL is inviting fans to join the Cardinals, Cardinals players, and the other teams in a volunteer initiative called Huddle for 100. The goal of the campaign is for NFL fans to donate 100 million minutes of time to help shape what our communities will look like for the next 100 years. Those fans that do donate will be entered for a chance to win a VIP experience at the Super Bowl in Miami and other great prizes. azcardinals.com forward slash Cardinals Huddle for 100 where you can find more information. So with the uh, veterans off and uh, away on vacation, the rookies have the entire facility to themselves. And uh, we had a chance earlier to catch up with safety Tyler Sigler. Division three products out of Wheaton College, wasn't drafted, wasn't signed after the draft, made the team after a three-day tryout. We got into all of that, but we started with uh, another big moment recently happening in his life. So we'll get into your story on how you arrived to the Arizona Cardinals, but we have to begin with this because we've been told that in between the second and third weeks of off-season work, you got married. That's that's correct. Yeah, I, uh, I was engaged about a year ago in May, and I uh, married my beautiful wife two weeks ago back in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So how does that, the planning of this, because... <laughs> You don't know where you're going to be, if you're going to be anywhere, yet we are both married and we know the planning process because it can't be done quickly. It's got to be done months <laughs> in advance. So how did how did that all work out? It was a little bit crazy. Um, I was in the New York uh, mini camp, rookie mini camp uh, with the Giants and didn't get signed. So went back to Michigan with three weeks left until I was married and things were a little bit uneasy. But um, luckily my wife is a very loving and... <laughs> forgiving and kind person so she was very patient um, and knew that it was really important to me to chase this dream so then the opportunity came with Arizona flew out here for the three-day tryout uh, really went really well and ended up being signed so kind of that faith and trust and there, there was a bigger plan ended up playing out pretty well um, and so yeah it was crazy for the first for the two weeks leading up to the wedding I was here I flew out on a Wednesday night got there at like 1 a.m. on <laughs> Thursday morning and then did wedding prep Thursday, rehearsal dinner Thursday, wedding Friday, flew back out here Sunday <laughs> wow. after a day and a half honeymoon. So a day and a half. Did you go anywhere? <laughs> uh no, we went to a hotel in <laughs> yeah. in Grand Rapids and then saw some family, so it was quick. When you when you originally got engaged and started planning, hey, in a year we're gonna get married, were you thinking this will be my last year of college football? 
mm-hmm. graduate and then move on with our lives and look for something else. You probably didn't think the NFL was uh, yeah. in your plans at that point. It was like somewhere between a dream and may- a maybe. Yeah. Um, a year ago, I thought I would go work a finance job or a sales job. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I had some uh, some a little bit of interest from some NFL teams, but didn't have a really secure, uh, you know, coming from a small school and. Um, and then as the year kind of progressed, things got a little bit more serious and a little bit more. And then it was kind of like my agent was like, no, you're fine. They're not going to have OTAs on a Friday. They're not going to have <laughs> OTAs on a Friday. And then all of a sudden, boom, OTAs on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> um, but luckily, the coaches here were incredibly patient. And mm-hmm. let, let me take two days to go get married. And <laughs> understood good the excuse. importance of that. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, again, he joined the Cardinals during rookie minicamp on a tryout basis. Mm-hmm. You impressed them enough to get signed. So mm-hmm. what was that, the waiting, and then what were you told when they said, yeah, we want you to stick around, we're going to put you on the roster? Yeah, so it wasn't as exciting or like elaborate <laughs> as a lot of people think. Uh, I walked off the field on the, the, the last day of the rookie minicamp this Sunday, and uh, I had already had my shuttle information and my flight to go home, and um, someone from scouting came and grabbed me and said, hey, don't leave the facility. And I was like, okay, hopefully that's a good thing. <laughs> but I didn't really know. You know, I hadn't gone through the process at all. So um, a lot of waiting, sat in the locker room. A lot of guys left, started catching their flights and started to get a little anxious. And then um, they kind of grabbed me and said, hey, your agent didn't answer his phone. Call your agent. <laughs> so I called my agent, and uh, then they were eventually able to connect and took me upstairs and signed the paperwork and it was like hey you're officially a cardinal and I was like all right wow <laughs> it's pretty unbelievable and so um for me it was it was pretty surreal I come from a family that's big football family daddy and grandpa were high school coaches and so being able to call my dad and my grandpa and my family and my wife soon to be wife mm-hmm. was pretty emotional it was pretty unbelievable how pressure packed is that time when you and I know you went to the the Giants camp too but doing both of them knowing hey, I've got to show these coaches something in order to mm-hmm. get on this roster, and I basically have three days when you don't know much about the defense and you're mm-hmm. trying to figure yeah. out who your teammates are. What, at a mental standpoint, what are you like when you know how much is on the line in this situation? I mean, for me, it was more just thinking, hey, I'm going to make the most out of every every little opportunity, and uh, I needed the opportunity to last three days. So every time we had an opportunity to, to show what we were doing, I mean, it was like, all right, every single thing counts and it's not like you're gonna get a ton of reps either you know three four reps in a in a period of, of, a, of a team period so mm-hmm. um understanding i think being in new york for that weekend really helped me kind of get a head start on like okay this is what to expect this is what you know it takes and uh was fortunate enough i mean honestly it, some of it, it too is, is a little bit of luck and a little bit of ball being thrown your way and making an opportunity you know, so it's pretty much just every opportunity really counts and you gotta make the most of it mm-hmm. so that was kind of my mindset going into it was, well, here I am, might as well leave it all out there and have fun. So, We always hear it doesn't matter how you get here, you got to make the most of your opportunity. We also find out that it doesn't matter where you went to school, mm-hmm. they'll find you. That's and right. you mentioned small school, Wheaton College, That's right. D3. That's I right. mean, <laughs> I, explain one, what Wheaton, where and what it is, and yeah. then that when you fire, first maybe got noticed that maybe, hey, the NFL might come looking. Yeah, so uh, Wheaton College is a tiny little Christian school in the west suburbs of Chicago. And uh, I got recruited out of high school to play baseball mainly um, and didn't have a ton of football opportunities. And Wheaton said, hey, come, you can come play both here. And that was really appealing to me. And uh, so I went down there to visit, and the head coach, Mike Swider, is an incredible guy. He's been there for 30-plus years. He's kind of built the, built the program. And so about – Two years into being at Wheaton, we had a coach come in. His name's Andy Sudebaker, and he played for eight years in the NFL. And he kind of pulled me into his office going into my junior year and said, hey, this might be an opportunity for you. And then uh, our defense coordinator, Coach Langs, had kind of already prepped me for that conversation. And so he, they both were like, hey, you might have a shot at doing this. And I kind of was like, yeah, you know, I was 20 or 19 at the time. I was like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> sure. And uh, then things started to progress going into my senior year where teams came in and had me run and teams started showing up to practice my senior year and I broke my foot during my regular season year the second game so kind of thought that was that was the opportunity was gone but they started showing up again the following year and uh, then all of a sudden this opportunity started to come up agents started contacting me and I thought why not let's give it a shot and mm-hmm. so kind of crazy that it ended up here but yeah 
did you think baseball might be a, a professional future for you going into college? Yeah, much more than football. Yeah. Much, much more than football, yeah. I had some opportunities to play at some Mac schools, but really wanted to play football. And, um, yeah, I think it worked out. Is that so, a lot because of, of your, your family and your yeah. dad and grandpa being in yeah, football Yeah, I mean, uh, at times it was like football was like almost too much. It was like too much of football. You know, you go home, it's on TV, talking about it in every conversation. But as I left the house and went to college, it kind of made me realize how much I loved the game of football and loved being around it and playing it. And um, so when, tam- when I actually was, at, you know, getting ready to leave for college, it was like, yeah, I need to go to a place where I can play. So um, you, pl- but you played baseball as a freshman. Yeah, a football as well. Were you? Yeah, so I was doing okay. sport my freshman year, and then uh, I just it's I, I couldn't couldn't yeah it's... couldn't do both. I, it was a little bit overzealous when I got to college, <laughs> but uh, so I decided to focus on football, and cause I, I just had more passion for the game and loved it a lot more. So, so Kyler Murray's not the only two yeah, exactly <laughs> star on this team. That's right, yeah. <laughs> What, what do you think of the, the speed of the game when you go through these practices coming from a smaller school mm-hmm. to, you know, NFL wide receivers? And w- how big of an adjustment has that been for you? Uh, I think it, it's a mentality thing. Like the first couple of days, you're like, oh, geez, these guys are bigger, faster, stronger and 10 times over. But as you get out there and start to talk to them, it, it, for me, it helps. Like when I have a conversation with a guy, I'm like, oh, he's just a normal guy. You mm-hmm. know, it's like sometimes we blow them up to be what they are on TV. Or, I mean, at the end of the day, it's like I realized I was here for a reason and I could run and play with these guys. And so as soon as I kind of got over that first day of like, oh, you know, Andy Isabella, he's pretty fast. And like some of these other guys, it was like, all right, you know, mm-hmm. but the speed and, and the you know, speed and size is much, much different. It's much different. Yeah. What do you think about your opportunity here within that safety room and then obviously special teams? That's where everyone gets their feet wet, especially mm-hmm. with uh, rookies coming in. But uh, on where you fit and potentially long term here? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all opportunity. So, I mean, for me, I know that special teams is going to be my bread and butter. Um, and that's only going to give me an opportunity to be coached by the, the safeties coaches. And I think it's all opportunity and it's just what you make out of it. And so um, I'm excited for you know, training camp in the preseason to really show what I think my ability is. But I think it's just all, I mean, special teams is everything. I got to go out there and play really well in special teams. And, um, and it's, I mean, I think for me, it's an effort thing playing as hard as I can and, and uh, having a lot of confidence will make a huge difference, but I'm really excited. I'm excited for the opportunity. It'll be pretty awesome. Your wife like it here? She does. It's (laughs) hot. I mean, it's so hot here, but, um, yeah, we're adjusting to the weather, but it's better to be sunny and hot than it is to be in the, in the cold and rainy so well we'll get you out of with this uh, and bring it full circle mm-hmm. honeymoon is there one in the planning stages <laughs> or at least so it's not just a one day one and a half day that's thing? right yeah so we actually uh we drove to san diego for three days this weekend okay nice. so we're we trying to break it up into small honeymoons i promised her a two-week honeymoon <laughs> by the time uh by the time everything is said and done but yeah it's, it's coming in the future Well, congratulations on both the marriage and (laughs) on making the team, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Appreciate that. Really enjoyed uh, that conversation with uh, safety Tyler Sigler. And uh, the reason, well, we have Kyler, uh, Kyler, we have Kyle uh, here for a number of reasons, but uh, he actually has more on this wedding story because I find this fascinating. I mean, you, you, you. you have such a passion for the game, and it's your goal, and it's your dream, and you'll do whatever it takes. And and Tyler did do whatever it takes because he was only, what, two days, a day and a half before his wedding he showed up. But uh, you actually did a little bit more digging into this. Yeah, and it sounded like what they originally thought was if they plan it for the end of May, uh, then even if he did latch on to a team – then the it would kind of be done for the summer at that point and they'd go on their vacation their honeymoon and then he could go to training camp after that but their dates were a little bit off and they figured out once he had an agent the agent said no if <laughs> if you're signed with a team at that point you're probably going to have to practice on Monday when you after the wedding so they realized that they said okay we'll deal with it if it happens and and obviously you know, 19 days before they got married is when he got signed by the Cardinals. He had to figure out everything. And like he said in the interview on Thursday and Friday, the team had OTAs. So he took those off and left on Wednesday night. And 
there was some question. He had to redo his flight because they pushed practice back a little bit on Wednesday, and they were scrambling to make sure he could get back for Thursday because I talked to his wife, and she was saying, we don't want him to miss the rehearsal <laughs> dinner. It's pretty important that he's there. But he made it back, like he said, 1 a.m., rehearsal dinner, went to the wedding, got married, hung out for one day, then they came back, and they're – they they're probably gonna do something later, but it's it's a little bit uh, up in the air at this point as far as a honeymoon. I think. Well, at the end of the day, I mean, it, it all worked out, and uh, happy for Tyler and his wife. And uh, again, it's a, it's a, a the backstory is is tremendous on this. The Cardinals brought in 28 players during rookie minicamp on a tryout, so you have three days to do whatever you can to impress. The coach, the head coach, uh, a personnel person, and then get signed. So Sigler was signed, as was Dante Strickland, running back out of Syracuse. So we'll see what happens with those two. But uh, I know you're working on a story about uh, the tryout process because it is another way to get in. And any way you can get into the NFL is a way. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you get here. But uh, you, re- you reminded me a couple of years ago, uh, Elijah Penny on a tryout basis and he was actually very productive Mm -hmm. with the Cardinals and right now currently with the New York Giants yeah and it's the situation for these guys where if if you don't get drafted and then you don't sign immediately after draft right away your chances of making of making the NFL dwindle significantly and then you go to the tryout and the guys that don't get picked up there that's basically the end of the road for them. I mean, there might be an instance or two in the NFL where some guy latched on after that, but if you don't if if Tyler Sigler didn't get noticed at that Cardinals camp, he probably would be doing finance or sales right now because there's just not a lot of opportunity after that. So, the fact that Elijah Penny did it is a, a pretty cool example of a guy who came in on his last chance and turned it into a legitimate NFL career. And now he's a fullback with the giants. He, he played more than a season here and he was also on the practice squad. So it, it's amazing, you know, how thin the line can be. And if you don't have a good three days of mini camp tryout, then you, then you don't make the NFL. And if you do, it gives you a, more of a chance. And for Strickland and Sigler, you know, the, it's still an uphill climb. They're still tryout guys trying to, make the team or make the practice squad but just to get here and to give themselves a chance is really cool yeah penny uh the 2017 season with the cardinals 31 carries 124 yards and two touchdowns and as we mentioned now with the giants one of those success stories after a three-day tryout as we continue here on a wednesday afternoon cards cover two from the dignity health arizona cardinals training center broadcasting as we always do in our bose qc 35s go to bose.com for more more information and a reminder if you ever miss a show here you can download as a podcast via apple podcast spotify stitcher google play music tune in and soundcloud and don't forget all of your favorite cardinals podcasts can be found at azcardinals.com forward slash podcast well as we've talked about here on this show and this entire week the rookie work continues the offseason program this week and next week and with that How about we get to know wide receiver Hakeem Butler just a little bit more. It's another installment of Rookie Cards with Lisa Matthews. I am here with wide receiver Hakeem Butler. Welcome to Arizona. So this is just to get to know you, the person. Are you ready? I'm ready. Two, three. I win. If you had a warning label, what would it say? Enter at on risk. Wait, what? (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Enter at your own risk. Yeah. That's good. Three. Win again. No, you cheating. Dang, dang. (laughs) What would you do if you could be invisible for the day? I would go to Area 51. There's some stuff going on. I want to see what's going on. Three. If you could vacation anywhere, where would it be? Australia. I'm just always going to be with Australia. Three. What should your Madden rating be? 99. You heard it. 99. 99. Three. Winning. Can we look at this? What's a personal goal you'd like to achieve this just have my confidence at 100, 24 7. Three. You won! Yay! <laughs> Who's the greatest of all time? Michael, Kobe, or LeBron? Anybody that knows me knows I'm gonna answer it is Michael Jordan. Not even close. Mm. What would your 10 year old self think of the person you've become today? He'd be in awe of just the person I've become, everything I've been through, and just still smiling. 
you know, he, he'd be excited about this dude. Awesome. Well, we're excited to have you. Thank Welcome you. to Arizona. I'm excited to be here. Next time, maybe you'll win. She cheated me. <laughs> well, that's the first. We have controversy on the rookie cards. I, I that's you know I'm, we'll have to check the deck. <laughs> yeah. Seemed a little bit stacked. I'll say this though about Hakeem Butler, uh, and he mentioned it there in that piece. His confidence, uh, one, you love it, and two, he just has this uh, personality, always with a smile on his face. And uh, late during minicamp, uh, a lot of people, are, media huddled around him, trying to ask questions. You know, the simulation, the transition. But uh, he was asked about the offense, and he he, he was like everyone else. I can't say anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's everyone is so tight lipped and it's just a matter of how you go about answering those questions. The veterans will say something without saying anything. And the rookies just basically go, yeah, coach says not to say anything. Yeah. They're not going to take any chances. <laughs> don't want to get in trouble. Yep. Hey, it's the element of surprise. They, they don't want anybody to know. Even Coach Clements on Underground, you Calvise, I believe, was asked about the offense, and he goes, I'm just not going to get into that. It's under wraps. Yeah. No one will know, perhaps until week one of the regular season. Uh, before we hear from the Bird Gang here on this Wednesday afternoon, you're getting your questions uh, via social media and those watching us here on Facebook Live. Use the hashtag CardsCover2, hashtag CardsCover2, using the uh, number two to get involved. We uh, need to let everyone know that the next episode of Cardinals Flight Plan debuts tomorrow. It's episode eight titled Summer School. Here's a sneak peek. Players and coaches were in front of the cameras today. That's right, it was media day. I didn't give nobody a warning with this one. This was a, this was a shocker coming in here and putting on makeup. <laughs> Still photos, headshots, candid shots, and then of course uh, videos. I thought we were just taking some pictures. This summer and this August are really the most critical time for this personnel department in a long time. We have to make sure that we are dialed in and everything is lined up perfectly. Here we go! First throw! We got huge ace! Get in your stance! Let's go! Get in your stance! We got nasty over here! Nasty! Number one claim is awesome, dude. We've had a lot of success in the past uh, when we had late summer signings. So there are players out there that we can find that's going to make this football team better. So we are going to continue to try to put gas on the fire. Hey, just wait on it. <laughs> just wait on it. Looking forward to that episode tomorrow. Again, flight plan episode number eight. It is called Summer School. And if you missed any of the previous episodes, just go to azcardinals.com forward slash flight plan to catch up before episode eight debuts tomorrow night at six o'clock. And with that, how about we hear from the Bird Gang your questions via social media using the hashtag cards cover two. Hashtag cards cover two. Love hearing from the Bird Gang here, and we do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Your chance to ask, uh, well, I guess uh, anything and uh, everything all pertaining to the Arizona Cardinals, of course. And uh, we've got a couple of questions here. And uh, Todd Seferati, I believe I uh, pronounced that correctly, but uh, wants to know, Kyle, which rookie other than Kyler Murray, well, that seems to be a qualifier with everything, <laughs> any rookie but Kyler Murray, would you pick as the most can't-miss player for the Cardinals this year and why? For this year? Yes, just for mm. this year. Like a breakout. Who's, who do you expect to have maybe the biggest impact? Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, it's between Andy Isabella and Byron Murphy for me. I think I'm going to lean toward Isabella. I, I know that Byron Murphy was chosen before him, but th the way Andy Isabella plays and the way Cliff Kingsbury wants to run his offense, I think it it's a really good marriage for those two guys. And the things he brings to the field are, are very intriguing to me. And I think he can impact the game in a lot of different ways. And when you look at the depth chart at wide receiver, you've got Larry Fitzgerald, you've got Christian Kirk, but conceivably, Andy Isabella could slide right in and, and be your third receiver if he plays well. So I think he can make a good impact. Murphy, I think, yeah. can as well, but I'll go with Isabella. And especially Byron Murphy because of the fact that he's going to have to play with Patrick Peterson missing the first six games. And in the potential of these guys on special teams, maybe Isabella, punt returner. True. Uh, Byron Murphy may be on special teams, whether uh, on the coverage units or perhaps, you know, we've talked about it. 
at Scottsdale Saguaro, he was a great offensive player. I don't know if they'll utilize those weapons here at the NFL level, but uh, in case of an emergency, he, you certainly have him available. Yeah, and obviously just at corner, whether he's playing the slot, whether he's on the outside, we don't know how that's going to shake out yet, but Byron Murphy is going to be a pretty big part of the defensive plan already as a rookie, and they were so excited about him when they picked him. So I think both of those guys can really make a nice impact. And, and if Byron Murphy can become a, a starting legit cornerback, that's that's a big hole to fill that the Cardinals haven't had opposite Patrick Peterson for a long time. Got another question uh, about the uh, offense. Dave Fitch wants to know, will the Cards be able to employ play action concepts in their new offense? And then he added, can't see how that happens in shotgun formation. Oh, I, no, I definitely do. I You've seen it a lot. Of, it's it's not the traditional going from under center play action, but you hold the ball out, and some of it's the run-pass option yes. plays. Some of it is like the zone read where you're going to hand it off and then he keeps it, and sometimes Kyler Murray can run that ball or sometimes he can drop back and throw it. So I think play action is going to actually be a big deal with what the Cardinals are doing, trying to keep defenses off balance and – Knowing how good David Johnson is running the ball and knowing what Kyler Murray can do with his legs, I think the play action is going to be effective because teams are going to have to be worried about a lot of different things when they do fake that handoff. And it's it's going to look a little different. and It's going to look a lot different than what we're used to, but it's all about the element of surprise or catching that defense to where it's just for a moment they're either moving up or dropping back, and that's as you were talking about the linebackers, even the corners on the outside, to where you can kind of catch them off guard, and that's what play action is all about. And what Cl- Cliff Kingsbury likes about shotgun, when you do play action there, Kyler Murray can already be assessing the defense. He can hold the ball out, but also keep his eyes on what's going on. When you do it from under center, the quarterback's blind because he's running backwards while he's faking the handoff. So in some respects, the play action from shotgun might actually be more impactful because you're already a little bit step ahead because you can see how the defense is reacting. Last question here from the Bird Gang. Appreciate uh, all of your questions here on this Wednesday afternoon. Sean Daigle wants to know, and I know there are many of you out there that want the answer to this, will training camp will have open practices this summer? And the easy question or the easy answer is, we'll see, because we don't know. Nothing's been officially announced. And I know there are teams around the NFL that are beginning to announce those. But so far, the Cardinals have not said anything about the start of training camp or even how many of those practices will be open. Yeah, we'll see. And obviously, it's a new coaching staff, and they might have specific things they want out of training camp. Um, But knowing that it's coming up, those dates will probably be released pretty soon and and people can figure out exactly what's open, what's not, what days they'll be on. But there's a lot of intrigue about how the Cardinals offense is going to look. And I think for the fans, uh, they obviously want to get out there and see what Kyler Murray looks like, what all these rookie receivers look like. So I think despite last year's record, I think there's a lot of interest in the Cardinals heading into 2019. Appreciate the Bird Gang sounding off here on this Wednesday afternoon. Your questions, keep them coming. We'll get to as many as we can. Love hearing from the Bird Gang using the hashtag CardsCover2. Hashtag CardsCover2. One note about the uh, training camp practices and the uh, question about how many will be open. I know there was uh, a lot of buzz earlier this week, and there continues to be because the Philadelphia Eagles announced their training camp schedule and just one of their practices. Let me repeat that. Just one of their practices. Practices is going to be open to the public. Other teams have come out with as many as 15, some with 12, others with eight. So it varies team by team, but uh, it's that element of surprise. You want the fans to get excited about the upcoming season, yet at the same time there's work to be done and how much do you show, not just the offense. Everyone's curious, of course, with the Cardinals, but defensively as well, special teams, all the fakes, everything that needs to be worked on during a limited time that you are on the field and how do teams balance. All right. Let's open it up to fans, Let although the coaching staff needs to get its work done. Yeah, and it's a, like you said, it's a, an intricate balance of trying to figure out what, what you can show and what you don't want to show. At the end of the day, I think the, the important thing is for these guys to, whether there's fans or not, really get locked in in training camp because there's so much to be figured out 
and there's there's some position battles. There's a lot of young guys. Even the old guys are learning the offense still. So every training camp for every team is important. But you think back to like 2015, 2016 for the Cardinals. Bruce Arians had been there multiple years. Carson Palmer had been your quarterback. It was a very veteran-laden group that had been together for a long time. So for for this this group especially, I think training camp is going to be really important for everybody to gel together and, and look forward to a hopefully successful season. Yeah, get as many reps as possible before you start the preseason and even start the regular season. With that, we'll wrap up this edition of Cards Cover 2. Uh, can't thank uh, Kyle Odegaard enough for filling in these past two days. I hopefully have convinced him that it's okay. He is, uh, one, allowed, and in two, uh, always welcome to join us here on Cards Cover 2. Not just, down. not just not just during the season on Film Room. Okay. We tried to get Film Room during the offseason. It just turns out they're not playing. <laughs> <laughs> dissect a practice a drill that didn't work out dissect some vacation yeah there we go well you enjoy your vacation we'll be back with you on friday special thanks to those behind the scenes tim delaney jim omohundro devin henry grant Greeley, jackson sipes for kyle i'm craig Grealu. we'll talk to you later on friday here on cards cover two